morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, this morning, actually, several weeks ago, uh, I talked with TJ. You guys, we get to see TJ periodically throughout the summer. And actually, last Christmas we got to see him. Um, he's uh, visiting this summer. Uh, we always give him an opportunity to come and share what God would lay on his heart. I've asked this morning if he would come and actually give us his testimony, share with us how he got to the place that he is. And, uh, you know, this is just part of our Testify series that is ongoing. Um, I have a number of you in my sights. So, you know, be warned. I'm, I'm coming. Okay, scripture says to be prepared in season and out of season. Okay? So at this point, I'll turn it over to TJ and let you share what you want. Sweet. Thank you. I'm actually going to grab this stool up here. If that worship didn't jack you up and send you into the throne room of God, I don't know what will. Because that was powerful. And, yeah, all of those worship songs were just a description of, of me and where I have been in my journey with the Lord. And as I was preparing to share today, um, like Glenn said, I had a couple weeks to prepare for this, and, and there's just so much that God is doing in my life right now, and so much that He has been doing, that like I was I don't even know where to begin honestly like it's just crazy to see the journey that I have gone on with the Lord um, I have basically been in walking relationship with the Lord for 18 years now um, grew up in a Christian home but didn't understand God beyond the religious side of the Catholic faith that I grew up in. And it wasn't until I started venturing out into another, youth, another church youth group that, that I began to get these conflicting messages of this God that wants a relationship with you and this God that loves you. And then I go... Here, and it's, you have to do this to be loved by God. You have to do this to receive forgiveness from God. And I, I was just torn between that. And finally, you know, I just, I gave it up to God and um, realized that it was a relationship that I was seeking with Him. And, I mean, I have come here many times and talked with you guys over the years, and every opportunity I get, I don't take it for granted. I I think that this is an awesome opportunity for me to be able to come, be able to feel like the Lord has given me something to share with you, and, and it's just always such a privilege. And, yeah, I mean, my walk with the Lord has been incredible. It has been terrible at times. It has been painful. It has caused me to have to give up certain comforts in my life, give up certain relationships in my life, give up things that obviously meant something to me enough to hinder where I where the Lord wanted to take me. And and it's just so cool. Um, just what he's been doing recently in me. There's been some things that I have really been seeking the Lord on and and asking for breakthrough to come. And and honestly, I saw a huge breakthrough in my life just this week, you know? And it's just incredible to be in that place of 
you know, reading back into some journals of just things that I was writing last summer when I was here, and, and seeing the dark place that I was in, the, the wrestling state that I was in, the loneliness feeling that I had in the search and the pursuit that I was looking for God to bring me out of, and to just stand here and, and just worship Him and know that through it all, He is with me. And, I mean, that song tore me up earlier this week. And, I mean, I was just listening to it over and over again. And I had no idea that they were going to be worshiping with it this morning, but like, as soon as it came on, God was just like, I am with you always. And you don't ever have to be alone. I am always enough for you. And I love the line that says, the wind and waves still know his name. Because he calms our storms. The Bible talks about Jesus calming the storm. And, and it's just so comforting to know that no matter what we're going through, our God is sovereign. And he knows everything about us. I was reading in Psalms this morning in chapter 139 and just... The fact that there is absolutely nowhere that we can go away from God's presence. And that's just so comforting, you know? I mean, I have been, literally, I've traveled over the world, many, many different places all over the world. And in every nation that I've gone to, I see Christ. I see God in the faces of the people there and the things that I'm able to do. He is there. And... And I've even been to places where it seems like God isn't there at all, but there's still light there. Yeah. And it's just so amazing to think about that. And yeah, I don't, like, all week I've been trying to think of what to share, how to share, where to go. Do I give Bible verses so that it feels like we're in church? Um, you know. <laughs> I'm just all over the place because there's just so much that God has been doing. And it's just like, I don't have enough time. Yes, Glenn has given me as much time as I want to share. But it's like, I could sit here and talk for hours, literally, of what God is doing in my life, what God wants to do in your life. And it's just so incredible. And a couple weeks ago, I was painting... Um, Glenn's house, and it was just such an amazing time to, for me, it was fun to be able to work and paint, um, but it was also an amazing time just to spend time with him and Christy on a personal level, a one-on-one -on -one level. Um, a lot of the times when I come here, we're able to sneak away for one or two meals, and that's about it, and so it was really cool to be able to go to their house daily and just do life with them, you know? And as I was there, I was reminded of one of my favorite Greek words. It's called koinonia, and it's fellowship, or communion, or unity. And that was something that I just longed for every day that I would go there, you know, to be with Glenn and Christy and Thaddeus, and just having that fellowship, and talking with them, and and sharing life stories, sharing what God's doing in our lives, encouraging one another, praying for each other, and just building each other up. And there was one night that um, I had woken up early in the morning, and I just felt like God was laying Ecclesiastes on my heart. And Ecclesiastes is actually one of my favorite books. Um, for many of you, if some of you guys don't know what Ecclesiastes is, it's basically... <laughs> Solomon saying, everything is meaningless. Nothing under the sun is worthwhile except for what you're doing in the Lord. And so I woke up early one morning and I just started reading it. And so then the next day, I went to Glenn and Christie's house and I was just sharing with Glenn. I said, I have no idea why God woke me up to, to read this. And I just started reading. And chapter 3 is one of my favorite chapters. Um, just chapter 3, verse 1 through 8, it says, For everything there is a season, a time for every activity under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to harvest, 
A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build up. A time to cry and a time to laugh. A time to grieve and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to turn away. A time to search and a time to quit searching. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be quiet and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. And honestly, right now, I have no idea why that is hitting me so hard. I don't. I've read this every single day for the past week and just rejoiced in the fact that for everything there is a season. And the season that God has me in right now is so beyond my comprehension. I don't even know how to describe this season because... The only way that I've been able to describe it to people that are asking me is, I feel like I'm in kind of a season of Paul, of where Paul used to go around and encourage churches and believers in different locations, and for the past two years, that's kind of where I feel like God has had me. You know, he's taken me to India, he's taken me to California, to North Carolina, to Georgia, to Hawaii, all over the place. To these different places and every time that I go to these places I am encouraged by myself but I have specific people specific meetings that I'm going to be having just fellowshipping having that koinonia with people and every single time it is turned into something amazing something to where the other people will just be like, man, this was just so refreshing for me. I needed that encouragement. I needed that reminder. I needed this. I needed that. And I'll walk away and say, man, Lord, I needed that. I needed to see this person. I just went to visit a couple friends in Iowa and Indiana last week. And some of the people that I saw in Indiana, I hadn't seen in four years. They came down on a missions trip to St. Croix. That's how we met. We connected. And ever since I've met them, they're like, come to Indiana, come to Indiana, we miss you, come on. And finally, this summer, the Lord said, go. And I was like, cool, I'm going to go, you know. And it's just so weird because I always seem to think that I just make these random plans and that it's just me that wants to go and do these things, that I want to go visit this person or I want to go do this thing. And there's always so much more to what God has in store for that time. And that's just something that I've really been learning and, and really reflecting upon, especially in these last two years since I've been outside of the organization, Youth With The Mission, that I was working with. Um, and that was really a, an interesting time as well for me to step out of that organization and, and basically all of the life that I knew in St. Croix. I'm still in St. Croix. I'm still doing ministry. It's not exactly the same as it looked with YWAM, but I know that the Lord has still called me there, that he has still placed a passion in my heart for the people that I'm connecting with and the things that I'm doing. And to some people, when they look at my life, they'd be like, he's not a missionary anymore. He, what is he doing? He's not going to church every day, or he's not serving the poor. He's not doing this. He's not doing that. And, and that was one of my biggest struggles when I kind of left the covering of Youth with the Mission of, Lord, what am I going to do? I have no idea what you're leading me into. I have no idea why I'm even still feeling like I need to be on St. Croix. I don't know anything, and as you guys know, last year the Lord took me to India, and I was able to have some training in apologetics, and that was really cool and awesome, and it was definitely 
something that I was only able to do outside of the full-time ministry with YWAM. But even as I got back to St. Croix last fall, and I just shared a little bit earlier that, that I was kind of in a dark place of just wondering what I was doing and if what I was doing was even really mattering, if I was here for a purpose. And, and God just began to reveal to me so much of myself and my own thinking of taking me kind of back to the way that I grew up in religion of having to do certain things to be considered a missionary and and it was just so interesting to see how how my relationships with people here around the country friends and in St. Croix and and one of the most frequent questions I'd always get is well what are you doing now that you're not a missionary and and I would have to stop and I would have to literally think because for me my life is ministry and it's not just because I was a full-time missionary or I am a full-time missionary it's because I'm a believer in Jesus Christ and no matter what I do no matter where I am I have a ministry and I have a responsibility and an obligation to live according to the gospel according to the Bible and to share that with those around me, you know, and and so when people would ask me, well, what are you doing now? I'd be like, I'm doing the same thing. They're like, well, but you're not working with them. I said, not full time. I do go and I still help out at the YWAM property. I, I help them if they need extra hands doing yard work or if they need extra hands doing ministry. We've rent some camps over the last year that I've taken a part in and led some small groups. I'm still teaching high school Sunday school, and, and oftentimes when I'm talking to people, it's kind of like I'm doing a checklist of, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm a good missionary, I'm a good Christian because I'm teaching high school Sunday school. I'm helping the missionaries over here. I'm taking my tithe and my offering and blessing this family over here. Check, 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 I'm good. What now, God? Can I go play? And... <laughs> I mean, that's, that's what it's like, and, and it's so unfortunate that a lot of the Christians in America think like that, that there's certain things that we have to do to qualify us as holy or righteous or whatever, and, and all that qualifies us is the blood of Christ and yeah. our acceptance of that and our asking Him to forgive us and to take us into that. And, and something that I've really learned, especially in being in full-time ministry, whatever that's supposed to mean, but being in St. Croix, working with YWAM, being two years out, working with God, my staff meetings, are my prayer times in the morning. Me and God, hey, what do you want to do today? I'm kind of free. <laughs> when I went back to St. Croix last fall, I made a promise to myself, and I said, the people that I race with, that I train with, the endurance athletes on St. Croix are my target nation. They are my people group that I want to minister to. I have grown into the ability of training, of racing triathlons and running races. I have made connections with those people, and I have deep friendships with pretty much every athlete on the island. And so many of them don't know Jesus. So many of them claim to know Jesus, claim to go to church, but have absolutely no relationship whatsoever with Him. They are stuck in the mindset of, this is how I was born, this is how I was raised, I just have to go to church on Sunday and check it off my list, I'm good to go. And, 
So, five years ago is when I started running, started doing all of these things, and started getting a heart for this nation on St. Croix. And so when I went back to St. Croix last fall, I had such an, a wide open schedule. I said, if anybody is going to take time out of their day to call me, to text me, to shoot me an email and say, hey, do you want to go swim? Do you want to go bike? Do you want to go run? I'm going to take advantage of that. It doesn't matter what I'm doing, I am going to focus on them. Because they are the people that I feel the Lord has placed on my heart to minister to. And I can't tell you how awesome that was, to be able to be doing something during the day, get a text message and say, hey, we're riding at 4.30, do you want to go? I'm like, oh man, I'm, I'm doing something right now, but I'm going to have to wrap up by 4 o'clock so that I can meet them. And over and over again, the Lord just continued to bless me in that. And I mean, I've spent hours with some of the people training and, and not even preaching to them, not even doing anything out of the ordinary than just talking to them. And when I see an opportunity, I bring Jesus into the conversation. Because they know that to me, Jesus is another person. He is one of my training books, you know. And oftentimes I'll get people talking to me and they're like, oh, what are you doing tomorrow? And I'm like, oh, I'm going on a bike ride. Who are you going with, Jesus? Yeah, I am. Do you want to join us? <laughs> and it's just so cool. And two of my favorite people that I train with are two older gentlemen. One is a professing Buddhist, and another one is an awesome guy who used to be a Christian, still lives by biblical standards, but isn't walking with the Lord. And a couple months ago, we were doing a 13-mile run, and we were just talking, if you can imagine that, while we're running, but something came up into the conversation, Jesus came in, and we started talking about ministry, and they were both talking, and they looked at me, and they said, you know that we are your ministry, right? And I looked at them, and I said, wow, this is going to be a cool conversation. <laughs> so I, I just kind of played dumb, and I said, what do you mean? And they said, God has placed you in our lives to make our lives better, to challenge us to be better people. And also, I think God has placed us in your lives to test you, to see how faithful you will be, to see how loving you can be, to see how much you can actually put up with. Because we aren't that nice. We can be pretty crude. We don't, we don't change ourselves in front of you, but you accept us the way that we are, and you desire to be with us. And so we are your ministry. And I said, well, what does that mean? And they said, hey, we're just letting you know that we're your ministry. <laughs> and Whatever you want to do with that is up to you, but we're just letting you know, so you can go with it wherever you want. And I was just so excited in that time because these are guys that I've ran with and cycled with for a couple years now, and they understand that I'm not just hanging out with them just to hang out, that I have a plan and that I have a purpose and that I see more in them than other people do, and I want to draw that out of them. And, and even the, the professing Buddhist, he says, man, you know, a couple, a couple weeks before I left for the summer, we were doing some really hard, intensive workouts, doing like hill sprints and, and everything, and he's a 60-year-old man, and he can kick my butt any day. And I was just in a good mood or good physical fitness one day or two days that we were doing right before I left and I smoked him up every hill that we ran up and I mean he was panting at the end just saying all right well the youth won today I'll get you back tomorrow and then he creamed me on the bike and then the next day we did running again and I creamed him on running again and and he's just like man I gotta get some of that bad 
Jesus stuff that you have, because that's awesome. He's like, obviously, Jesus is working for you, and, and maybe if I can get some, I can extend my triathlon career a little bit more. And I'm just like, probably not what you need to seek Jesus for. But if that's what's going to bring you to Jesus, let's go for it. You know? And so it's just so cool to see how five years ago, I was sitting on a beach and I felt like the Lord told me to start running. And I was like, I hate running, I don't want to run, I'll run. And it's just transformed into so much more than just running. It has transformed my life. It has taken me so much deeper into my faith. All of the passages, I've shared this with you numerous times, all of the passages that talk about perseverance or running the race, all of those have come to life because I am an athlete. I have disciplined my body to get to this prize where, yes, it is a, a physical finish line, but there's so much more in the spiritual realm that I am striving for, that I am pressing on towards. And, and it's just so cool to see how something so insignificant as triathlons or marathons or running races or training days can bring such glory to God. And, and that's something that I've really learned over the years is that it's not what I do. And that was one of the biggest struggles that I had working for a ministry organization was I was constantly bombarded by the thought of I'm not doing enough or I need to do this to do that and or to receive this or to feel good about that or I have to write a support letter and so I have to list all of the things that I'm doing so that people can see what I'm doing and that I can prove to them that I'm serving the Lord and that it's worthy of their money and and that's not what Christ is calling us to Christ is just calling us to be in relationship with him to love him just I mean he talks about it in uh, let's see, Matthew. Matthew 22, Jesus is asked, what's the greatest commandment? He says, love the Lord your God with our, all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And then after that, he follows it. And the second greatest is to love your neighbor as yourself. And that is something that has just transformed my life, to love God and to love others. And if I'm doing those things, Jesus says, that completes everything else. In the, in the law, and, and I have discovered that being a Christian, being a Christ follower, serving Christ, it's all about relationship. That there is nothing more important to me than the fellowship with a believer, the fellowship with an unbeliever, the fellowship with anybody. And Having that relationship is what we were created for. And, and that's been something that the Lord has really just embedded in me, especially in these last two years, as I found myself empty-handed. I found myself where I had scattered many seeds for many years, and all of a sudden, I had nothing. I had no harvest to reap. I had no more seeds to sow. I was just sitting there like, Lord, now what? What am I going to do? Why am I here? What is my purpose? And, and slowly the Lord just began to open doors as I wrestled with Him, as I wandered away from him at times, as I struggled, as I fell, as I got back up and tried to stand. Sometimes I had to crawl. And, and just realizing that there's 
so much more to our walk with the Lord than than what we ever see, you know, that He has so many different purposes for us and so many things during our days that He wants to share with us and and all we have to do is take the opportunity mm -hmm. to recognize Him, you know, and and again, going back to where can we go from your presence? You know, we can go all the way up to the heavens and you're there, all the way down to the depths of the sea, to the grave, you are there, everywhere. We can't escape his presence. And, and yeah, that has been literally like the breakthrough that I have received this week has just like skyrocketed me into his presence. Like just constantly aware of Him. And I've gone through different seasons in my life where, where the Lord will, will wake me up in the middle of the night and to pray or to read or just to, to think. And there's often times where I'll wake up in the middle of the night and not recognize that it's the Lord calling me to do something and it's been so awesome in this season that I've been here that my mind is focused on him and just like the other night I woke up wide awake at two o'clock in the morning and I was just like man I need to go to the bathroom so I went to the bathroom Got a drink of water, which doesn't make sense at all. <laughs> I'm going to get some more water so I can wake up later and go to the bathroom again. But So I roll over and try and go to sleep, and I'm just wide awake. So I'm like, oh, what do you want, Lord? And he just lays, again, some, some verses on my heart. He takes me to 1 Corinthians in the chapter 13, where it just talks about love. And, and then he takes me back to Ecclesiastes. And then he takes me to Proverbs. And then he takes me back to Psalms. And then he just says, pray. And he put one of my friends on my heart. And as I began to pray for them, you know, I was just asking the Lord to reveal himself more to them in their situation. I have no idea exactly what they're going through. And then he just said, get up and pray. And it was one of the first times in a long time where the Lord has called me to spiritual warfare for my friend. And literally, I walked around my room for 10 minutes just praying and commanding Satan away. And then it was done. And he said, go to bed. I'm like, what? <laughs> I mean, you had me read for a half an hour pray for 10 minutes and you just want me to go to bed? Like, I'm all jacked up. Let's go. I'm like, who else can I pray for? Come on, I'm, I'm praying for Glenn. I'm going to pray for them. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. He's like, no, just pray for them and go to sleep. I'm like, all right, you know? And it's just been so exciting to see that after, after going through desert times of feeling dry and feeling like there isn't much going on, that the Lord is okay with that, that resting is good, that taking time away from the busyness of life, the busyness of whatever is great that when we slow down enough to listen to the Lord, then He will speak to us and He will guide us and He will lead us. And, and yeah, I mean, just this week alone, like, there's been things that I feel like I've just walked out on the tiniest, tiniest limb with the Lord. And, like, I feel the limb breaking. I'm not quite sure if... I'm just hanging out on the limb for the view, or if I'm hanging out on the limb and I'm going to fall and crash into something, 
it's just like I can hear it kind of creaking and kind of bending, and I'm just like, Lord, I stepped out on this in faith, and I have no idea what you're doing here. And instead of worrying about my situation of standing on this little limb, I'm just pressing into him, and I'm saying, it's in your hands. If you have called me to do this and the limb breaks, you're going to catch me. And if you don't catch me, you're going to teach me how to fly. So, <laughs> let's go. And that's just been my attitude for a number of years in a lot of the things that the Lord calls me to do. It's just, and Lord, if you're calling me to do this, if you're calling me to speak this, if you're calling me to go here, I'm just going to go. And I'm just going to see what you have in this because I know that I can't see everything. I know that I don't know everything. I know that I will never understand you fully. And I know that I am so ill-equipped for everything that you are going to ever call me to do. But you are going to equip me for what you call me to do. And and that's just been my journey. Like, for 18 years, I've been walking with the Lord. Some days, it has been hand in hand. Other days, it feels like we are on the opposite side of the world. And yet, always, God calls me back. He woos me back to Him with His love, with His affections. And... And one of my growing favorite scriptures comes from a book that isn't probably a very popular Bible study book. I actually did, I was, it was not my idea to do a Bible study on the book of Hosea, but I have sat in on a Bible study of Hosea, and um, Hosea is a very interesting book, but there is a, a little section in there, in chapter 2, verse 14 through 18, and then skipping down to verse 20, that it just speaks so much volume to me because... I mean, there's been so many times in my walk with the Lord where I have felt like I am in a desert, that I am dry, that I am parched beyond belief, that I am hungry, that I am just desiring anything from Him. And it just feels like I am abandoned and alone and so far away from Him. And verse 14, it's talking about the Lord and His unfailing love for Israel. And it says, But then I will win her back once again. I will lead her into the desert and speak tenderly to her. I will return her vineyards to her and transform the valley of trouble into a gateway of hope. She will give me give herself to me there as she did long ago when she was young when I freed her from her captivity in Egypt when that day comes says the Lord you will call me husband instead of my master and then it just goes on to say what the Lord is going to do for Israel in that time giving them peace. He will make a covenant with them. And in verse 19 it says, I will make you my wife forever, showing you righteousness and justice, unfailing love and compassion. I will be faithful to you and make you mine. And you will finally know me as Lord. And like I said, that is one of my growing 
favorite verses because because of the time that I spent in the desert and spend, not spend, spend, and will spend in the <coughs> desert. I know that God calls me to those times, that he allows me to go into those times of feeling despair and feeling neglected because it's in those times where breakthrough can come, where he will reveal himself like none other. And again, it goes back to the relationship that he wants with us, that he is so radically in love with us and he desires us so much. You know, there was another worship song that I was listening to this week, and just one of the lines was, how far will you let me go? And then they brought it into, and then you will call me back. And I just began praying that, and I was like, Lord, there's times where I felt like you have let me go so far. Why? Why would you allow me to go so far away from you down these paths of sin and temptation and torment and, and basically death to myself. Why would you allow that? And then he reminds me here, it's so that I can woo you back. So that you can see that I am enough for you. That there is nothing that this world can offer you that will satisfy you more than the love of me. And again, you know, I'm just reminded of that this week as, as breakthrough happens and as, as I feel like I'm just being plowed into the presence of God. I literally, I had no idea what the Lord was going to speak through me today. I, like I said, I had so many things that I could talk about, so many things I wanted to share, so many, so many things. Like, I just thought of coming in here, like, literally, I had to sit down because I didn't know what was going to happen. I'm literally, like, I said earlier, if that doesn't jack you up into the presence, like, I came in here and I was jacked up for Jesus. Like, it is so cool to be in that place, to wrestle for for seasons and to feel like nothing is happening and and then for the Lord just to ignite that fire immediately and and it's just been so cool like this last week has just been like an ongoing worship service in the presence of the Lord I have kind of disconnected from everything I haven't been on much social media, and it's just so free, you know, to, to see something that I have allowed at times to control me, you know, oh, what did my friend say on Facebook? I have to go check. I have to go post that I'm doing this so that everybody in the world can be jealous and, you know, whatever. And it's just so free to not have that and, and so many times I just find myself thinking upon the Lord and getting this freakishly big grin on my face and saying, man, Lord, you are good. You are good. You are amazing. You are beautiful. And, and I just love you. And, you know, I can't even sit here and tell you that I have any more definition to my life than I had two years ago when I stepped out of working with youth with the mission. I have definition in the sense that I know that there are people that I want to share Jesus with. There are people that I want to do life with that I care deeply for and I know the Lord cares more deeply for them than I do and he wants to reach them and if I get to be the conduit between heaven and earth to them, then great. Hopefully I get shocked while I'm shocking them because being jacked up for Jesus is a good thing. All you guys, I hope 
at some point this week, say jacked up for Jesus. <laughs> Just going to keep throwing it in there so that at some point you'll remember it. If somebody asks you about the sermon, I don't know what he was talking about, but he was jacked up on Jesus. <laughs> but to not have a specific itinerary, I think, kind of takes us back to Jesus. You know, he only did what the Father told him to do and what he saw the Father doing. But if you look, he was so random in his ministry. You know, and and even last night I was thinking about the story of Mary and Martha and how Martha was so bent out of shape that Mary was sitting at Jesus' feet. She said, Lord, why don't you, don't you see that she's just sitting there and I'm making dinner? Tell her to help me. And, and Jesus basically just shut her down and said, Martha, she's discovered what's really important. And I'm sure there's so many different interpretations of that verse that we could come up with. But for me, I see rest. I see the importance of listening to my master. I see the importance of fellowship, the importance of relationship, the importance of slowing down and not being so focused on what I'm doing, but who I'm doing it with. And, and it's just such an awesome reminder because I mean, there's so many examples in the Bible of when Jesus has these crowds and the disciples want to do more. And he's, no, I'm going to stop here. You guys go ahead and go over there. I'm going to go pray. I'm going to go rest. I'm going to go re-energize my spirit with the Father. And, and that's what I'm really discovering over these last two years. When I worked with Youth with a Mission and the, the summer before I stopped working with them, I took a sabbatical and I was here during that time and shared with you guys where I was, but I was burnt out because I was so focused on what I was doing and I was doing it all out of my own strength. And yes, I was doing great things for the Lord, but I don't know how many of those things I wasn't called to do, things that I had agreed to do that sucked the life out of me, that if I would have relied on the Lord and said, hey, is this really something that I need to do? Would he have said yes? Or would he have said no? I don't know. I'm not going to dwell on those things because they're in the past and it's done and it burned me out and now I'm recovering. Praise the Lord. But... To just understand that no matter who you are, no matter where you are, that you have a purpose, that you have a plan, and it's it's not that difficult to figure out. If you're going to do something, do it to the glory of God. Do it in His strength. Invite Him into your conversations. Invite Him into your work. Invite Him into your school. You know, wherever you are, that's all it is, is having that relationship with Him and allowing Him to, to lead you and to guide you and to, to set your affections upon Him, you know? And, and like I said, it's, it hasn't been an easy journey for me. I mean, there's people here that are older in their spirituality than I am. 18 years, that's a high school graduate. That's technically an adult. So I guess I've become an adult in spiritual terms, but, I mean, there's no, no final place, you know, we're constantly growing in our knowledge and in our understanding of Him, and so I will never arrive to, to that place, but I'm going to try my hardest to try and arrive to a place where I can be fully captivated by Him, and where my ADD and shininess of, oh, hey, what's that? <laughs> Stops taking my, my attention away from the Lord. But 
yeah, it's just, when I look at my life and look at my journey with the Lord, like I said, it had ups and it had downs. There was times where I felt like I was drowning, times where I felt like I was getting too much air, everything. But it's just releasing myself into his hands and and being willing to do whatever, be willing to go wherever. And and honestly, like my my relationship with the Lord is is great. It's rocky at times. It's non-existent at times because of my choice sometimes. There's been times where I've turned away for seasons. There's been times where I've turned away for minutes. There's been, you know, it, it ranges from minutes to years. And, and every time, God's just like patiently waiting. And He has it all worked out. He knows exactly what today holds for me. He knows what I'm going to be doing tomorrow. He knows what I'm going to be saying three years from now. Whether I'm sitting in this stool at this church, I don't know. But he knows exactly where he's taking me and what he's doing. And in that, I find the rest that I need. And thank God that I am not a planner, really. Like, I love being spontaneous, and I love the fact that God respects that in me, that He put placed that in me, and He respects it, and He can literally be having me in a conversation, and somebody will say some crazy thing, and I'm like, hey, yeah, Lord, that's awesome, let's go do that, you know, and, and it's just so exciting to be able to be on a roller coaster with the Lord of never fully knowing where he's going to take me, never fully understanding how powerful my words can be to somebody, to have a lunch with a friend and, and just spending that time with them and realizing at that time that that was exactly what that person needed, that they needed just a smile or they needed to know that they're being thought of, not only by me, but they're being thought of by the Lord. And, and that's, what, that's what I want you guys to walk away here with also, being jacked up on Jesus, but also that our life is all about relationships with other people. And it's about bringing Christ into our lives and sharing Him in the lives of others. And it isn't always specifically busting out the Bible and saying, well, you have to do this, you have to do that. This is what the Bible says. It's just showing the love of Christ to people. It's going up and loving them and encouraging them or just calling them up and saying, hey, I don't know why you're on my heart and my mind today, but I just want you to know that I'm praying for you, that I love you, that I care for you. Or, if it's somebody that you don't really like, you call them up and say, hey, let's go have lunch. I just want to, I just want to be with you. I want to deal with whatever's in my heart. You don't have to speak that to them, but open up the door to God to allow forgiveness to come and and for a relationship to to grow because all of us in this church are here for a reason we're here to worship God we're here to fellowship with one another and the more that we open ourselves up to each other the more that we can receive and not only receive from each other but receive from the Lord and I mean this is this is one of my favorite places to come and worship. I mean, I've, I've gone to many different churches, and, and this is one of my favorites just because the community here is so strong and so alive for each other. And, and so I just want to 
applaud you guys for that because there are churches where there's dissension and disagreement and and problems that, that get in the way of worshiping and getting in the way of why we truly come together for the fellowship. So, yeah, and that's just a, a little bit of of where I'm at. Um, I am going back to St. Croix. Don't know how long I'm going to be there. Don't know exactly what I'm doing other than training with people. We're going to be starting. Um, I got certified as a triathlon coach in May and the triathlon federation there we're going to be starting a junior triathlon team and so we're going to be raising up teams to who are interested in racing and giving them one-on-one -on -one coaching the poor kids that get to be with me are going to get a spiritual side of coaching as well because that's where my philosophy comes from and they're going to understand that there's more to physical training that there's a spiritual side to it and hopefully they're okay with that and if they aren't then I'm going to find somebody that is okay with it but so there are things that the Lord has opened up doors that he's let me peek into um, yeah, it's just, it's a cool, a cool time to just be serving the Lord, suffering for Jesus in the Caribbean. <laughs> I'm not there right now because I would be suffering, so when it cools down, I'm going to go back, so it's not as terrible, but it's just so, so amazing. Um, again, like I said before, when you open yourself up to the Lord, what he wants to do and what he's capable of doing in you know I never thought for a moment 18 years ago when I accepted the Lord that I would be a full-time missionary now I'm basically a self-supporting full-time missionary because I don't have any monthly supporters anymore and that's pretty awesome in itself because the Lord is allowing me to survive and he is blessing me in, in the financial department that I have no idea where, where it's coming from because of, he hasn't called me to a specific job. And so it's just so cool to, to see his faithfulness in that area. Um, so yeah, I guess I will be here for probably three or four more weeks, not quite sure. Again, there's that I leave when the Lord tells me to leave thing but as you pray for me just pray that I would be open to whatever the Lord wants to do you know um, whether it's waking me up in the middle of the night to pray for people whether it's causing me to be on my knees and on my face for myself um, the specific people that he's placed on my heart to speak to, to, to share him with, you know, whatever. Um, it's just, yeah, just, just pray that, that I would abide. That's kind of been my prayer request for my men's Bible study in St. Croix for the last couple of months, is that I would just abide. And it, in abiding with the Lord, I'm connected to him. He's, pruning me, he's making me look pretty, and, and he's doing his will in that time, and that I would be okay with whatever his will is, that when a door opens, that I would have the courage and the obedience to walk through it, no matter what it is, and when a door closes, that I would have the wisdom and the courage to walk away from that, knowing that that's not where the Lord wants me, so... Yeah, I think my prayer request for you guys to pray for me would be to that I would just abide in the Lord because when I abide in Him, then I'm where I'm supposed to be.